Jonah chapter 4. A complete city answers every Christian's dream today. A revival breaks out. They get right. They turn to God. God turns away his judgment. But it displeased Jonah. Do you know anywhere else in the Bible that, that it's found? In the Gospels? Whenever Jesus healed anybody, the Sadducees and the Pharisees would find some kind of complaint. They never rejoiced at the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. He did it on the Sabbath. He walking through the fields eating corn. Man, 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 man. Now remember, Jonah's problem is a Jewish righteous problem. These are a bunch of dead dogs. They are the enemy of Israel. And Jonah has been called to go to the enemy and preach to them that God is going to destroy them in 40 days. Now you would think, hey, this is a great message. All right, we're going to get them. We're going to get victory through God. Victory through Jehovah. Victory through Jehovah. Praise the Lord. Hosanna. We're going to get... You talk about the enemy here. Why is Jonah so upset? His message is the enemy of the Jews, the Gentiles, are going to die. And don't you read that in the Old Testament? Lord, get advantage of my enemies. Take, take care of my enemies. Avenge me of my enemies. Lord, go get them. Go kill them. But this pleased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. No repentance. Deuteronomy 18.20 And he prayed unto the Lord. Well, out of four chapters, four small chapters, Two of them Jonah prays. That's half, that's half his book. Give him that much credit. But he's a rebellious, angry person. So he takes it to the Lord. And you got to wonder what his heart is because he doesn't get right. But he takes it to the Lord. He prayed on the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital... I mean, he's serious. This is Jehovah. This is the God of his family. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob he's talking to. This is no Mary. This is no icon. This is no false God. This is God. Was not this my saying? What? Before we get to the next part, which is the whole illustration itself... There are things said that are not recorded. Paul says uh, something about what Jesus says something. I forget what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a saying that it's quoted out in the world. Blessed are they. No, that's not it. Well, Paul says, you know, didn't Jesus say, and blah, he quotes it. And you, you can't find it anywhere in the Gospels. And they're recording here that, that, that there's, there's, uh, we are told in the Bible what Satan says, even though it was never quoted. So we're going to read here something that Jonah said to God that's not recorded to now when he mentions it in his prayer. This was my saying. When I was yet in my country. Chapter 1, verse 2. Before he even got on the ship, God said, I want you to go to that city. I want you to cry against it. Jonah said, first, therefore I, f I fled before unto Tarsus. So even before he gets on the ship, he speaks to God after God calls him and tells him what his calling is. For I knew, faith, that thou art a gracious God. 
merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. All right, so let's get with the story here. Go back to chapter 1, verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3, he's on his way to Joppa. Verse 4, he gets the ship to Tarsus. Before he even runs down to Joppa, verse 2, cry to that great city against it, for their wickedness has come before me, God. And Jonah says to God at that moment, God, you're a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, great kindness, and repentance thee of the evil. If I go over there and preach that message, you're going to get right with those people. And that is what angered Jonah. You know somebody else in the Bible got anger at God's mercy? Peter, when he took the sword, he was going to slay people for Jesus' sake. And cut off a man's ear. And then Jesus, hey, stop it. And he put that ear back. That, that got Peter angry. These are people going against his God. These are people going against his Savior. How dare you? And then, wait a minute, you just ask us, didn't we have a sword? Jonah is angry that the Gentile nation was spared. Now, how's that sound? And yet, I have known Christians since 1987. Now, I think I had this happen two or three times in my life with Christians. Someone has prayed for someone's lost soul. What, what? I don't, I'm not even, I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about them. And that person that they're praying for got saved, but they got saved by someone else leading them to the Lord, and the other person got angry. Because it wasn't them that led them to the Lord. So they got angry because they got saved by somebody else in an open Bible. Does that sound ludicrous? And yet, here it is in the Bible. They get right with God, and it displeased Jonah, because I knew that thou art a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, great kindness, repented thee of the evil. Therefore I fled before unto Tarsus. I left and went on that ship because you're a gracious God, and if I preach that message to them, you're going to get right. They're going to get right, I mean. I can't even understand it. I can't understand that much hatred. And then people accuse me when I preach on the streets and, and my family when we go down to places to get Joshua. You just don't have love. I'm down there telling you what God's telling you to do. That's love. Love is when God says, go, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Bye, God. See you later. Because I know you will save them people. But I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to be a Jonah. He preached that message. Yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. As, hey, I don't want to do this. I'm doing it just because I have to. And to hell with all of you. But I know God's going to save you. And that's exactly what happens. And he gets upset. And we're not done. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. That's the second request for, for suicide by somebody else. Look back at chapter 1, verse 12. And he said unto them, the seamen, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Kill me. Now he tells God, take my life. These people got right, kill me. Ladies, would you like to be married to this man? 
Would you even like to have a friend like this guy? For it is better for me to die than to live. This guy's got a serious problem. Then the Lord, then said the Lord, Does thou well to be angry? And there's no answer. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. God's like, what's your problem, dude? I hate that word. Why did I use it? Didn't Jesus, that's how he dealt with the fairy? Well, why are you guys so upset? Didn't you see what happened? Don't you see everybody rejoicing? So Jonah went out of the city. He was in the city. Wherever he's walking, there's sackcloth, there's ashes, and there's people praying and repenting to God, and that's just getting him angry. So he leaves the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. 40 days did he sit there? Because he said in 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I'm going to walk out in this city and I want to see the destruction of this city. But my testimony is, for I know that thou art a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth thee of the evil. Verse 10 of chapter 3. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Jonah's out there now on the east side of the city. Do it, do it, do it. You know what another problem with Jonah is? 40 days. If this city is not destroyed, Jonah would be considered a false prophet according to the law. Didn't the law say that if a prophet proclaims, if it does not happen, he's a false prophet and he's to be stoned? Jonah has become a false prophet. It's going to be 90 plus years. 99 years, thereabouts, before this city is destroyed. Now, this, story, this, story, this yeah, city is destroyed 100 plus or minus years. I've got to wonder, did Jonah add to 40? Because the city is destroyed, just not now. And God is foreknowing. Jonah is angry. The message, chapter 1, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. He goes in there, now Nineveh was the city, great city, in three days' journey, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Where did the forty come from? That wasn't the message in chapter 1. The message was, you are a city, great city, God has your eyes on you. Maybe Jonah said too much. So he's, stand, he's sitting under a booth on the east of the city, waiting for this city to be destroyed, and biting his nail. I'm going to be a false prophet. I'm going to be a false prophet. I'm going to be a false prophet. And you were. And you were. And the Lord God prepared four prepared things in Jonah. Jonah 1.17, he prepared a great fish. Hmm? It says, well, five, including this one. Four, six, he prepared a gourd. And we'll look at the rest as we go along. God made this gourd, this plant, Miraculously, you know that? It made it to come up over Jonah. This plant raised itself up, gone over Jonah, 
It might be a shadow over his head. We're in a hot desert here. And we'll see later why it's important to cover himself up. To deliver him from his grief. He's angry. He's got grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad for the gourd. Hmm. Well, he's happy about one thing. For a gourd. I'm trying to look, look up something here. So he's happy for the gourd. It's protecting him from heat. Verse 7. But God prepared a worm. Like he prepared the fish, like he prepared the gourd. When the morning rose the next day, so this is overnight, and it smote the gourd that it withered. It said smoked the gourd. The worm came up, bam, hit it, and it died. It didn't say he ate it, it said he smoked it. He used a worm to hit a gourd and it died. This is one weird book. And it came to pass when the sun did rise. It's early in the morning. That God prepared a vehement east wind. He prepares a fish. He prepares a gourd. He prepares a worm. He prepares the east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted. So he has like a kind of a heat stroke thing. So God protected him with the gourd in, his, in the shadow, prevented him from getting a heat stroke. God's trying to comfort him. He didn't appreciate it. And he wished himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. This is the third time now he's requested suicide. This time, anyway. Even if it's this fainting, this, this heat. I want to die. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry? Verse 4. For the gourd. He steps in a little further. Verse 4. Does thou do well to be angry about this whole people city? What do you now? Okay, you're angry about the gourd now? And he said, now he answers, I do well to be angry even unto death. The gourd has no soul. Philippians 1.23 It was for me. It did me good. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd. You... You just read what God told him and what the condition of Jonah. I am more worried about that stupid gourd than I am about this city. Pity on the gourd. What happened to the gourd? It withered up. It died. And Jonah, oh man, look at that. That poor little gourd. Jonah's out of his gourd. He's lamenting about a fruit. I don't know if you can eat gourds. For the which thou hast not labored. You didn't plant it. Neither made it grow. You didn't put it there. You had nothing to do with that plant. Now how would you like to have your tomato plants do this? Which came up in the night. 
How would you like to have a plant come up in the middle of the night and produce a fruit? See, when God prepared a gourd, he prepared it in that one night. And it perished in a night, a 24-hour plant. The pity that Jonah is showing is self-pity and vegetation pity. I don't know how to classify the second one. And notice he's not getting no rebuke by God for that message he gave. Notice God can't do nothing with an angry man. He's trying to get Jonah to calm down. All right, so your pity over the gourd. God's still speaking. And should not I spare Nineveh? Oh, see, when well, it's not about the gourd. That great city. Go back to Jonah chapter 1, verse 2. That great city. There's a lot of people in that city. Wherein are more than six score, that would be 20. Or the 40 now? I forget what score is. 20. So six times two would be 120,000 persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. They got to be under five, six years old. There are 120,000 children who do not know their right hand from their left hand. And you take me, the average family would have three children. Let's, let's give it that. You got at least 400,000 adults, at least. Minimal. And what is God saying to Jonah? It's the thing that when I grew up with, we had all these movies about the mark of the beast. And the thing is, I used it as an expression and what about the children? You got a bunch of young children running around there on, getting milk from their mothers who are being held by their mothers, who are being taught how to walk by, by their parents. They're just in a crib. They are being burped. They're being fed. They can't eat. They got mushy food. And you're worried about a gourd? You're not happy but displeased, Jonah, exceedingly, and very angry? I just saved 120,000 children. God say, not me. I just saved them. And they even put, he said, look at it, and also much cattle. Even, the, look, Jonah, the cows are wearing sackcloth. You know what's going on with cows in Israel? They're worshiping two golden calves. And here you are in a heathen city, and they're wearing, you, you imagine at this point, I know God, he's, he's, he's a humorist. You imagine Jonah sitting there in his booth and a cow walked by with sack. See that? Much cattle. And you're sitting here griping, complaining, and in misery. And the book of Jonah ends with a what? What's that last thing there? A question. And we don't even hear what Jonah responds. How's that one? You are led to think what Jonah thought. And you don't even try to think what Jonah thought because you don't know if God touched his heart or not. God asked, what about all those children? And then boom, the book ends. What book beyond God's book would write a story like that and leave you cliffhanging? Anybody else would have told you. Jonah got his heart right, got right with God, and repented, and everything worked out great. And he went back in the city and they had a good time. 
Or he just stayed angry with God and God said, okay, close the door and you get out of here. I'm going to work with it. But we don't know. But we do know one thing. Jonah is a child of God. God has worked with him. God is working with him. God has dealt with him. God is trying to get to him. And God loves who Jonah hated. How's that for a message? Now, what about you, Christian? When the Bible tells you we're to love the brethren, we're to love others, we're to love as God loves it, and he tells you, go into all the world and preach the gospel, and you don't. Meanwhile, those who do love the Lord, those who do go knocking on doors, those who do go on the street, those who do have a public ministry, and people go, you don't love people. You have no love. You're scary. You're driving away. That's not what Jesus would do. And yet we're doing the very things that God has told us to do. Heaven is rejoicing over this city and Jonah's over there. I gotta say one thing for Peter. At least he rejoiced with Cornelius and his family and the apostles. But do you remember what happened when we went back to the apostles in Acts? I'm trying to think of the word that's used. Um, what's the Bible word? Not rebuked. But they had an argument with Peter about him going over there. Contended. They contended with Peter because he went to a Jewish house. I mean, a Gentile house. Now, I was looking for somewhere. It says in the Gospels, they're talking about, uh, check the rolls. It says that there is no prophet that comes out of such and such. Talk about, it's, maybe it's Luke. Yeah, uh, just to see if we can find it real quick. No prophet comes out of, let's see if I can find this real quick. And then time we got. They're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting thing that they don't know their Bible. Let me do this. I'm trying to do a search here. So let me tell you what's going on. Trying to find something here. We haven't left the airway yet. All right, John 752. That's what we're looking for. John 752. Now, in actuality, Jonah was a false prophet. It's 40 days, the city was not overflown. Now, John 752, the Bible says. And they answered, said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee, north? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Well, when you check Jonah, 2 Kings 14, 25, that's exactly where he came from. They didn't even know who Jonah was. That Jew that went to the Gentiles. Ew. Second Kings 14.25. Jonah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jonah came from there. Second Kings. Second Kings 14.25. We'll read that. Second Kings 14.25. I know some people won't look it up. So we'll look it up for you and we'll close. 14.25. It says, And he restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spanked by the hand of his servant, Jonah, the son of Amittiah, the prophet, which was of gath Hefer, And you check the place there. He's from Galilee. Look, look. Jonah was another, he was a prophet of the Lord and spoke other prophecies, according to 2 Kings chapter 14, 25. So he just didn't go to Nineveh and preach. 
He preached also about Israel in the land. So Jonah was used by God. Like Peter to the Jews. Yeah, but them stinking Gentiles. That's a whole different story. So, that's a man named Jonah. He needs to be preaching to Sunday school. A lot better than some other pirates and other junk out there. <laughs>